book was not for me. Might be for you, not for me. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my May wrap up for 2022 part 2. I read a total of 12 books this month so if you're interested in the first 6 that I read you can check out part 1 which I will leave linked down below but here are the final 6 books that I read for this month so without further ado let us get started. The first book that I have is Melt For You by Jennifer Dugan. I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars. This follows Fallon and Chloe who used to be best friends who worked on their mother's shared ice cream truck. Last summer they had a major falling out when Chloe and Fallon hooked up and then Chloe left for college. A year later Chloe is back and Fallon can no longer pretend she doesn't exist when their mothers take an opportunity to further their business. The girls must work together at a very important festival out of town where there will be no chaperones to keep them cool. This book really bothered me because the whole thing could have been solved within two pages if Fallon and Chloe had literally just one conversation. I get it that they're teenagers and at that age it's super hard to talk about your feelings but literally just one conversation could have solved this entire book. I think that a lot of people would enjoy this. It is a pretty cute summer read and like the ice cream chuck vibes, great for summer. But I personally just have such a dislike for the miscommunication trope. I just couldn't get past it in this book. I think that the book would have been a lot better if we also got Chloe's point of view on this whole situation that happened between Fallon and Chloe because the whole book was just Fallon complaining about how much she hated Chloe. I will say that I did enjoy the road trip aspect of the book and I liked all the shenanigans that the girls got up to so for that I'm giving it a two out of five stars but if that wasn't in there and it was literally just this miscommunication and Fallon complaining about Chloe the entire time it would have been a one star so the road trip saved the day but this book was not for me might be for you not for me the next book that I have is Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This follows 29-year-old Hannah who is very indecisive with what she wants with her life. One night Hannah goes out with her best friend Gabby and she runs into an old flame who asks her to stay out with him. She has two options. She can either stay out with this old flame or she can go home with Gabby and this book is told in alternating chapters that show us what Hannah's life would be like based on whatever decision she chose. I found this concept to be very interesting. I really liked the alternating chapters and how different Hannah's life was based off of the decision that she made. This is my fifth Taylor Jenkins Reid book and honestly I think that she is such a talented writer. I thought it was so interesting how drastically different Hannah's life ended up based off of one tiny little decision. I liked both love interests for the most part. I think that they both were great options. I really, really loved how the concept of soul maze was explored in this, but Hannah ended up being happy in both multiverses, even though they're different love interests. The only constant that was in both storylines was Gabby, who I personally think had such an awesome relationship with Hannah. I think that their friendship was definitely the highlight of the book for me. I just thought that they were so sweet and supportive of one another. I just think that the found family aspect of this was so well done. I definitely enjoyed that part the most rather than the romances. I can see why some people found this book to be annoying and very repetitive because essentially you're getting the exact same story in both chapters just with different names and like slight variants. But there were some things that were mentioned repeatedly to an excessive amount like Hannah's love for cinnamon rolls or her high bun. Like we get it. But other than that, like I did really enjoy it. I thought it was a cute read and I gave it four out of five stars. Next up I have I Kiss Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuiston. I give this a four out of five stars as well. This follows high school senior Chloe Green who wants nothing more than to beat her arch nemesis Shara Wheeler at Valedictorian. But then Shara disappears on the weekend of prom after kissing Chloe and leaving leaving a series of letters behind that contains clues to where she is hiding. It is up to Chloe and two unlikely companions to team up and bring Shara back in time for graduation so that Chloe can beat her the right way. But along the way, Chloe discovers that there may be a little bit more to Shara than she once realized. I loved Casey's first two books and this was no different. This is their first crack at YA and I think it was really well done. I really loved the mystery aspect 
aspect in this and watching Chloe, Smith, and Rory get the letters and try to piece together what these clues meant to them. I also think the little notes and excerpts from Chloe's life previously and everybody involved in the disappearance was a really great touch. They were at the beginning of each chapter and kind of gave a little bit of insight to their relationship. I think that the thing that always shines in Casey McQuiston's books are their characters. I just think that the relationships that they form between these characters are always just so well done. I love how close Chloe, Smith, and Rory grew as the story went on. Their relationship just developed into something so sweet. I think that each character was just so multi-layered and they all went on a journey of self-discovery, which I really loved reading about. Every single one of them had their own personal struggles that they were dealing with and going through during the story, and I really liked how they got to discover their own identities and figure out who they were with the help of their friends and families. The one complaint that I have about this book was that Chloe was a tad annoying at times. She just had such a huge obsession with Shara and it became a point where she became very self-centered even when her friends needed her most. She just wouldn't listen to anybody except for the little voice in her head telling her that Shara was fucking with her. It just like wasn't that deep and she needed to like chill out. But overall, I give this a four out of five stars. I think it was a really great first dive into YA for Casey McQuiston and at this point I will read anything that they write no matter what it is. The next book I have is the second book in The Foxhole Court. It is The Raven King. This is by Nora Sakovic and I gave this a four out of five stars. See, people told me that the books got better as you progress because the first book I gave a 3.5 and I didn't really understand what all the hype was, but as I've continued on, I can say that I am so in love with these characters. They are just so fucked up and you can't help but like root for them. It again dove into some very dark topics, which I was not expecting in the first book, but I was expecting in this one, so it didn't come as quite a shock when certain things happened. I just love this group of misfits so much. I think that the found family in this is so incredibly done. The foxes care so deeply about one another and will protect each other at all costs, not only from other people, but also themselves. I can't wait to read the final book and fall in love with these terrifying but lovable characters even more. I gave this a four out of five stars. Definitely gonna pick up the next book very soon. The next book that I have is All of Us Villains by Amanda Foodie and Christine Lynn Herman. I gave this one a 4.5 out of five stars. Every generation, seven families send one champion to a battle to the death. Over the high magic of Ilvernath, whoever wins this tournament gets control over the magic until the next battle. Historically, the low family usually comes out victorious, but this year, the six other families have some tricks up their sleeves after a tell-all book is published anonymously, which draws tourists from all over the world to the battle, and it's like the story of the Blood Veil. I listened to this on audiobook. It is a full cast audio, which I think was a really great choice because there are so many points of views in this book, so being able to actually hear each character and the differences between them was a really big highlight for me. It was a really great way to see inside the contestants' heads and learn their motives and what they were planning. I think that the backstories of each contestant was very interesting to learn more about. I will say that Alistair Lowe was my favorite out of all of them. He was just the most complex in my opinion. I just loved how dark his reputation was, but how he was so much more than that. I also found it very interesting how each contestant had very different views on the other families based off of the reputations that they were told from their own own families. I loved the backstabbing and alliances that were formed in this. It was just so much fun to read. I will say that I do think that it took a little bit of time for the action and excitement to start, but once the blood veil was there, I was all in. I'm definitely intrigued to see where book two goes with this because the ending I was not expecting. And then the final book that I will be talking about for the month of May is The Memory Thief by Lauren Manzi. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. 
This takes place in the town of Craywick, where memories are currency. Four years ago, 17-year-old Etta Lark made a split decision that caused her mother to be placed in a coma in the town's asylum. The tyrannical ruler called Madame is threatening Etta to sell her mother's memories to the highest bidder at an auction before she kills her off. Edda will stop at nothing in order to protect her mother, so she decides to rejoin the Shadows, which is a rebel group that is trying to get rid of Madame once and for all, and it's like the story of that. I thought that the concept of this was very interesting. I was very intrigued about the whole memories as currency thing, and I thought that the whole thing would be executed very differently than what it was. For me, I just felt that it was a very average story, nothing that I hadn't read before. I liked Etta as a main character for the most part, same with the love interest Reed, but I was not a fan of their romance whatsoever. It kind of came out of left field because they seemed to hate each other so much, but then within like a day, they switched to being madly in love, and it just did not make sense to me. Especially because the whole backstory of this was that Etta betrayed the shadows so horribly, but then this Reed character comes in and is like, it's okay, doesn't matter all the bad things that you did, I love you, and it just like, it just didn't work for me. There was also just absolutely no suspense in this. Everything was just incredibly convenient for Etta. You knew that no matter what situation she got herself into, somebody was going to come out of nowhere and help her, so there just was no tension. It made for a very boring story, in my opinion. In all honesty, I think that the book probably is more of a 2 or 2.5 out of 5 stars, but I do think that the idea and concept for this book was very original, so I'm giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. I just think that it definitely could have been executed better, but I liked what they were trying to do, so. Alright everybody, so those were the last six books that I read for the month of May 2022. If you are interested in the first six books, I will leave that linked down below. You guys can check those out. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!